Yo, what's up, dorks? Welcome back to yet another educational English video. I am your new dad. And today, we're talking about how to improve your spoken English. Look, I'm sure all of you guys watching at home right now are really good at reading English, you're really good at writing in English, and you're really good at hearing English, but one of the questions I get all the time on Discord and in the comment sections is, how do I improve my spoken English? Well, don't worry, because today we're going to find out. And uh, hopefully we have a, a good time in the process, we have a couple laughs, maybe we cry a little bit, we're gonna have fun, all right? Before we jump into this video, if you like what you see and you wanna join the dork army, well, all you have to do is smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and that's it. You'll be a dork, it's that easy. And if you have suggestions for something you'd like to see in the future, well, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, make sure you join the Discord server. The link is in the description down below. We have a hell of fun over there, but, now, let's learn some English. Just before we start out, let me quickly make it clear how important spoken English is. For me, I think it's the number one thing for people to know. Fight me if you disagree. Fight me, dude. If you have really good spoken English skills, well, guess what? It makes hearing you that much easier for the listener and makes conversation and it makes communication that much easier. That's a skill that'll help you professionally, it'll help you academically, and it'll help you socially, right? Even dorks still need friends. So let's just dive right in and see how we can improve our spoken English. So the very first thing we're gonna talk about today is why we need to open our mouths when we speak. A lot of you guys come from languages, your native language, you can get by with without opening your mouth too much, you can just go do 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 However, those of you following this channel know that I teach you the American English accent. And Americans, we like to go big in just about every sense of the way, including our mouth. None of that British crap. <coughs> Hello, governor. You fancy a cup of tea, mate? Oh, yeah, I've got a chode in my pants. Yeah, I'm a wee little English nerd. Nah, baby, we speak English with guns. <laughs> One of the really fascinating things about American English is that we really move our mouth a lot when we speak. We don't keep it closed, we don't keep it minimal. No, we are very, very expressive. You're having like mouth Olympics going on. Your tongue is going all over the place, you're opening your mouth wide, you're changing the shape of your mouth, and that's what helps you build that accent. So, just open up your mouth and let your tongue do the work. Very poor choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so dirty. Ah, <laughs> uh, next one. <sighs> All right, guys. Honestly, this one sucks. You have to learn the International Phonetic Alphabet. I know. It's such a pain in the ass. It's truly the least exciting thing about learning the English language. However, it's one of the most beneficial things that you can possibly do. Phonics and phonetics are extremely important when it comes to speaking and also with reading. But I understand the desire, so to say, to just keep putting it off and pushing it off and pushing it off and just not wanting to do it right away. But learning those silly little dumb shapes will go a long, long way. It's going to teach you how to pronounce words. It's going to teach you how to uh, say those words, which is the same thing as pronounce. It's just basically going to make you know, like when you look at a word and, and you, you look at the phonetics, it's going to let you know exactly how you should say that word, right? It's, it's a way for you to know exactly what you need to say. Because even though parts of English are phonetic, most of it isn't. And to be able to pronounce those words correctly, if you haven't heard them already or, or you know, you, you didn't already know them, well, you need to use the phonetic alphabet to learn how to pronounce them. And then, well, guess what? You won't have any problems with saying it in the future. So the next tip I have for you, and, and I think this one is, is quite important as well, is don't speak like a robot. I know it's really easy to get caught up, stuck inside your head, thinking about what you're going to say next. And when you do, it becomes very, very, very robotic and you become difficult to talk to. Here's a quick little story. When I lived in Italy and I was learning Italian, 
people wouldn't want to talk to me because I would get very robotic in my speech. I would slow down, I'd be thinking about exactly what I want to say, and then people would automatically start switching the conversation into English. Well, the problem with that is you don't get to practice, right? So here's my suggestion, and I probably shouldn't be saying this, but find yourself a little bit of liquid courage, right? Have a drink, have a drink. All of a sudden, you're not going to care whether or not you make a mistake. And that's the thing is you, you, you speak robotically because you care too much about making mistakes. Well, stop caring right? Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes are A-OK. -okay. And most of the time, people aren't going to think anything differently if you speak with the best grammar or you speak with poor grammar, right? So if you really want to improve your language, stop caring about those mistakes and stop speaking like a robot. Get a little bit of liquid courage in you and just start talking, start chatting. And that's the best way to go through it because you'll be using it. You're going to hear yourself making mistakes that you could focus on in the future and, and you can work on not making those mistakes. But in the present, you'll be talking naturally, right? Because once you start talking like a robot, people will not listen to you, okay? And, and listen, I'm not, let me give a quick disclaimer, legal disclaimer. I am not suggesting that you become an alcoholic. <laughs> Don't drink more than you should possibly drink, but a little bit of a, a glass of wine or two or a glass of whiskey will, will definitely take the edge off and help you be more confident in, in your speech. So, uh, and if you're not old enough to drink, you better not drink or I'll, I'm your new dad, I'll kick your ass, okay? I'm your new abusive dad. All right, so for tip number four, we're going to talk about why learning phrasal verbs, why learning idioms, and learning slang is super duper 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 important. The thing is, a lot of these different parts of speech aren't something that you would know unless you already learned them before. These are just things that you have to learn. It's not as cut and dry as other parts of speech. You just have to learn them. And not knowing them can cause major problems when you're trying to communicate with other people. Fun little story for you. When I was a wee little American boy, I loved reading Harry Potter. Now, the first version of Harry Potter I got was the British version, right, for, for book number one. And as a, as a you know, nine-year-old boy reading the story, there were a lot of things I didn't understand because I didn't understand British slang. I didn't understand British idioms. As I went forward and as I read them more and more, obviously I, I learned them. Um, however, the thing is, you need to keep in mind that with with all of these different things, like the phrasal verbs, the idioms, and, and slang words, you're not going to know them unless you learn them, so do yourself the favor and study them. All three of these things I have videos for on this channel, and I'll link them in the description down below, but do yourself the favor and just study them. I do want to quickly talk about phrasal verbs, because a phrasal verb is when you have a verb well, let's do this here, a verb plus a preposition. And that preposition will always, always, always change the entire meaning of what you're trying to say. So for example, you have words like look after, look around, look for, look at, and look into. All of these phrasal verbs have a completely different meaning. Not a single one of them means the exact same thing. By changing that preposition, you change the entire meaning of the sentence. So you need to learn those. And full disclosure, if you don't take the time to learn them, you will really struggle when it comes to communicating and, and understanding other people that are communicating to you in English. Hey, this is the very last one and it's all of our favorite. And I know that because I, I'm a YouTube content creator, and I know my analytics, and I know what videos do better than others, and this is watching TV. All you gotta do is sit back and enjoy the show. Watch TV. It's that easy. And actually, I would extend it even to watching YouTubers that you really enjoy. Like, I like watching uh, PewDiePie. I like watching Scott Kramer. I like watching um, Danny Gonzalez or Cody Ko. Right? I like a lot of content creators. Um, and, and the thing, the reason why this is good 
is because you're hearing the way that people naturally speak. These are just people that are talking, and in TV shows, it's usually more focused than YouTube content creators, where they're talking about something in every episode that's specific to what you're interested in. Maybe you like cop dramas. Maybe you like uh, science fiction TV shows. Maybe you like uh, dramas or comedies, right? All of these things will be based around something that you're probably already interested in, and you'll learn drama, or... <laughs> I didn't mean to say drama. You'll learn vocabulary based on things you're already interested in, which means you're probably talking about it anyways. I mean, how dope is that? Whatever you're interested in, there's TV shows for it, and you could watch it and see how people communicate in English, what, how they speak, the, the way that they talk, and you can mimic that in your own speech, right? Uh, think of your favorite character. I, I said this back in a video uh, quite quite a long time ago where one of my suggestions is find a character that you really like and try to talk like them. Talk to yourself in the mirror like that character, and it's really going to improve your spoken English. But for this, I'm just going to say watch it. So here's the real main thing that you need to do. When watching shows, try to listen for new words, try to listen for new vocabulary that you can add to your vocabulary, add to your diction, and use it to help you express yourself. And over time, your English is just going to improve on its own. Okay, so that's it for my spicy ass content this week. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. I don't smash, just beat the shit out of that fucking like button. And uh, subscribe to my channel, please. We're, we're almost at 10K, and when we get to 10K, I'm going to shave my mustache and my, my little goatee, and uh, we'll start from scratch. When we get to 100K, I'll probably shave my head. That'll be fun. Oh, and also, if you have any suggestions for things you'd like to see in the future, let me know in the comment section down below. Now, for a little bit of affirmation, like always, I like to close my videos out by telling you how proud of you I am, how amazing it is that you're improving yourself. Every time you watch educational content on YouTube, you're taking your time to learn. And that is an extremely important thing. You're making yourself smarter, you're making yourself a better person, and you're working towards your future. So congratulations, I'm so proud of you. As your new dad, I love you, and I'll see you next week.